Steve. Hello, mate. It's cracking. What's going on? Oh, just, you know, enjoying a Friday, last day of the week. That's right. Got a big weekend planned. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing all your friends, going out for dinner. Yeah, yeah planning doing that. Some, planning some international holidays. All that stuff, mate. No, I will actually go out and get go out and get a little bit of a tan. I think this weekend, go out a couple of walks. Meant to be warm. That'd be nice. Yeah. How's uh, How's the morning been? Morning been okay. Same as usual. Yeah, busy. Nice day. Got a bit of morning sun. Got a bit of sunburn on my nose actually. It is yeah. With the sunscreen out from now on, I think. Yeah, that Adams Town crew. They're pretty rough to work with. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not what really. Uh, Not really? What have you got for us today? So I've got two. You've got one. Yeah. Yeah. Easy piece. First one is um, so I've got I've gone I've gone the one of them's a person in particular again, so similar to last to two days ago with Rafael and Dar. Yeah. But I'm going to start with the the first one. The first topic is, and I know you're going to have an opinion on this because it's your favourite food: pineapple on pizza. Is it overrated or is it underrated? Or is it rated? Rated. Rated? You think I, it's rated? I, I, I like it. Yep. I, I like it on there. Yeah. I, w- I wouldn't like, I wouldn't add pineapple to a pizza unless it already had it on there. Yeah. Oh. But you can. I don't, but- I don't actually know if this can be rated actually because it's kind of got such a, it's such a discussion point. Oh, so, I, think it, I think it can. You think it can be rated? Yeah. I, I think it just is what it is. Like, I, if I get a ham and pineapple pizza or Supreme or something, like, yeah. I'll happily eat the pineapple on it. Like, I enjoy it. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm not, like, adding it on there. And I'm certainly not taking it off. Like, Yeah, that's right. So I'm not, not one of these people that are, like, actively always looking for pineapple on pizza. But when it's on there, I enjoy it. So yeah. you're just going to say you're just gonna say rate it as is? Yeah, just just... Just is okay. what it is, I think. Okay. That's, that's interesting as well, mate. That's good. Yeah. What do you think? Okay, so I, I think it's I think it's criminally underrated. Mm. Criminally. And, and I, I, I was I, sorry, before you go on, I, I was leaning towards if it was going to be one of the two, it would have been underrated. Certainly not overrated. Yeah. And and I'm not talking and, and again, I'm sort of this is a little bit more broad as well. I'm not really talking about the taste. Like so pineapples, pineapple's actually my favorite fruit. Okay, so and I'm and I'm not and I'm not having pineapple on like pizzas with like salami and stuff on. It has to be like something specific, like a Hawaiian or anything like yeah. that, which is bloody beautiful. Yeah. But right. I'm just talking about where it comes to being criminally underrated. Is just the uproar about pineapple yeah. on, on a pizza. It's just it's just too too over the top. Yeah, it's a very touchy subject for pizza lovers. Some people, yeah. Yeah, some people, just adamant that it like should not be on there. Yeah, and there's other people that just absolutely salivate for it. But have, have you ever heard like have you ever heard an uproar for banana on pizza? <laughs> nah. Exactly, exactly right. And and, and if pineapple. anything, banana on pizza should be absolutely getting roasted deluxe. But pineapple on pizza just it just gets a bad rap. Yeah, and, and even and an, and an even more um, normal ingredient that also should probably be getting a bit of a bad rap. I actually like it. Is anchovies? Yeah, I don't they know. are just like because because they're so like the, the I hate them taste, on pizza. Yeah. E- exactly, but but that's why I that's why the the broad question was is is pineapple uh, on pizza underrated or overrated? And I'm just talking purely purely because it just gets absolutely hammered on exactly. social media. Oh, it, is it? A, it's think, not that big a topic, really. No, it's not. It should just be no. taken with a grain of salt. It's either yeah. It's it's somewhat similar to pickles on Bur- Macca's burgers. A hundred percent, it is absolutely. That, that's just sort of part of the burger. I, I like it. Just quietly, I love a pickle. Yeah. Oh, awesome. the, I could eat them by itself. Just yeah, no worries. Beautiful. But yeah, yeah no, I, I I think the old I think the old pineapple gets a bit of a bad rap. Yeah, doesn't deserve it. No, nope. criminally underrated the pineapple and the pizza. So yeah, the, obviously we're talking purely Hawaiian. Yeah. But like if we're we're not talking like barbecue meat lovers and slapping some pineapple just, on it. Just where it belongs. Like, yeah, exactly. Come on. It, it absolutely makes the Hawaiian because without that it's just cheese and ham. Boring. 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 
So please, people, give pineapple a little bit of love. Yeah, agreed. I've had enough. <laughs> All right, my one. This is going to be interesting to hear what you have to say about this. Yeah. NRL question. Ooh. Over, overrated, okay. or, overrated or underrated? State of origin. State of origin. Okay, so you're talking. You're talking now. Yeah. Just uh, like this year, last year, the last 20 years, like sort of group it all together. Like not, not yeah. as in like the games specifically this year to a state of origin as a, as a. Oh, thing. mate. In general, if you, it's, it's funny. If, if you ask me, I'm just going to say what I think right now. And I, I think right now state of origin is overrated. I think it's overrated because if you asked me say five or 10 years ago, I would say, it is rated as is because because the, the the hype behind state of origin is always huge. It can't be and understood. part of and part of the part of the appeal with state of origin football is is the fact that it was like the tough stuff. You know what I mean? Like it was it was like the hard hits, the hard the hard tackles, the hard runs, the gritty plays, this and that. But especially, I think now with the rule changes in rugby league, where it's sort of sped up a little bit and it's and it's, it, it's become a lot faster, I think it takes the element of of hard hits and toughness away from it. So it's almost it's almost just like a regular regular game to me now. So mm. for that reason, I, I say it's overrated. That's fair. It's certainly yeah. not not the game that it used to be like no. 10, 15, 20 years ago. No, and that's partly just change of rules as well and fighting and all that. Sort of yeah, that's yeah, probably exactly more like right. that's probably more like twenty five years ago. To be honest, actually, that was more like nineties. And but but even like I think even like mid two thousands, like two thousand and five, two thousand six, I still think it was pretty tough. It's about and when New I, South Wales started their losing streak, wasn't it? Yeah, or something. Well, I, I think the toughness stopped when Paul Gallen punched eight miles in the face. I actually think that's when it ended. I think that was it. Paul Gallen destroyed State of Origin. Origin. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, what do you reckon, mate? I, I agree with you. Overrated. Yeah. But for, yeah. uh, I, I do agree with your reasons too, but the reason that I had was yeah. more just that it, it actually can affect the NRL premiership. Because, oh, yeah. Because all these plays, and the way that you kind of brought up and how it, it is that you really want to make your origin team, like obviously Queensland or New South Wales, but as a night supporter, like the amount of injuries that players have got in Oregon, yeah. which has put them out for weeks afterwards and yeah. cost them a good run at the finals. And, yeah, it, and it kind of just never really gets spoken about. Like no one ever misses Oregon because they want to win, win a premiership. Yep. And, and I think that it just really detracts from it. And like, would you rather make Origin, or would you rather, or would you rather the Blues win the Origin, or would you rather your team make it to the Grand Final? And I think, I, th- I think some, I think some people honestly play State of Origin football ahead of their, yeah, their club. I, I agree, and I, I just think that maybe it's because the Knights don't have that many Origin players. But when, when we like Pong, I think it was last year Pong got injured in Origin and missed like a bunch of games afterwards. So what happens, yeah. And he's not the only one, like other teams, where they, they have a player and then they obviously rest players before and after. And sometimes they're really important games. Yeah, and they've, I, and they've, I, I they've given given away losses. And for a fringe team like the Knights that are sort of, you know, give or take going to make the, the finals, if they'd strung together a few more wins the last couple of seasons, they would have been in a much better position to have a good chance to make it past you know, the first or second week. Yeah. Um, I just think the whole mindset of it is a little bit, yeah, obviously overrated. And I, I like what they do in the NBA with the all-star game. Like you make the team and it's cool. Like that's a big achievement, but then the game's kind of a bit, bit of a fun game. Yeah, yeah a bit of a fun game. And I'm not saying no, the, origin, the origin shouldn't be a fun game because it's like, that's what it is. But I just think it's a little bit backwards. That, you know, a lot of players would rather make that than... Be, be available and healthy for their team for you know rest of the season and then and then you saw and then you saw last season you saw you saw the impacts on um putting the state of origin at the end of the year so that that, yeah. that doesn't work that, that doesn't work either because then then it comes down to player burnout 
as, yeah. as well. So and I didn't give a, I didn't give a shit about it last year. I was over nah, me, me by November. Me either. I had enough. Hey, I was I was I was done with it. So, but like, have you ever been to a state of origin? Nah. I yeah, wanna. it's it's unbelievable. That the yeah. atmosphere is the atmosphere is great because you know yeah. the whole New South Wales first Queen, New South Wales versus Queensland rivalry is probably the biggest rivalry in Australian sports. Yeah, and just people just get super passionate, and then obviously the crowd's going bananas. It's um, it's really, really, it's a really big spectacle. I think watching State of Origin live is probably underrated, but just mm. State of Origin as a whole is overrated. Agree. Yep. That's what I think. Funny you. that, mate, because my last topic's rugby league based too. Oh, here we go. Two rugby league, one one day. But this is okay, you know why? Because a lot of our listeners actually like rugby league. So it's, and it is tis the season. It's getting down crunch time. It's perfectly fine. And similar to uh, my Rafael Nadal topic, I've got a particular person. Right. Very, very polarizing figure. We all have an opinion of, of, of this person, whether he's one of the all-time greats, if not the greatest, whether he's really not as good as what people say he is. And that is Cameron Smith. Good one. Cam Smith. I think underrated. So Cam, so Cam Smith, obviously, he is regarded. So he's he's retired now. He's played over 400 games. He is regarded as probably he, I think I think I think universal like unanimously top three player of all time. He's he's regarded as. I think he's underrated, mate. Underrated. I, I think he is, and it pains me to say it, but I think yeah. he's, he's the best to ever lace him up. Number one, you reckon? Who's better? Woo! Who's better? Gee, you know who I think's better, mate. Tell me. The eighth. The eighth <laughs> immortal. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I would love to I think it was Joey, but like we, we spoke about that in another podcast, talking about how many games he played and the effect he had on the game and whatever else, but. Yep. Cam Smith, 400 games. I don't have the stats in front of me, but the amount of them up. the amount of grand finals they won and obviously him being like the captain and spearheading that, like there is no one else even close. Yep. Like, like you, you can't even have Jonathan Thurston in the same argument. Like they, they what, won one premiership? The Cowboys, yeah. yeah. Cowboys won one con. Yeah, which was... Fantastic, but like, Great, but how many Cam Smith got? Heaps. <laughs> Have you got it up there? I've got it, mate. Here it is. So, Cam Smith, you, you finish your argument and then, and then I'll, yeah. I'll try. So, I, I just think that the fact that he played 400 games, so his longevity of the game is really important. Like, he actually yeah. was still far and away like good enough to play. And he, even in his last season, he was still like best player on the field most, most games. For him to do it for however many seasons that was, like what, fifteen or sixteen or something, yeah, and, and to to be lead, and I know he had a good system and a good coach and all that stuff in and, Melbourne, but and he, he obviously had two all time greats around him as well, yeah, Billy Slater him, and Cooper Cronk. But for him to, he's still not in the same discussion as Billy Slater and Cooper Cronk. Like he's far and away a better player than both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Then uh, I I can't argue it. He's, he's the best. Like Joey, great player. Two two premierships, changed the game, all that. But it's got nothing on Cam Smith. I'm sorry, and it pains me as a Knights player, and I hate Melbourne, and I hate when they win, and I hate that they've won 19 straight. But I think it's I think the proof's in the pudding. Underrated number one. So my biggest my biggest gripe on people talking about Cam Smith. Uh, so first firstly, I'm going to tell you whether he's overrated, underrated, or rated. I actually don't think he's overrated or underrated. I actually think he's ra- I, I think he's rated. I, I, I think I think bang bang on. I think if someone comes to me and says that, that Cam Smith's in the top three greatest players of all time, I, I I nod and say, yep, for sure. And even though I think that Joey's number one, the new right Uno, if someone comes to me and says I think Cam Smith's the greatest, I, I can't argue him. I, I just go, okay. Like that, that's completely fair. So in my opinion, he's he's the second greatest footballer I've ever seen. Is Cam Smith, right? Now the thing the, the biggest the biggest gripe I have, it it drives me insane, 
is when people say, I, I don't rate Cam Smith. I think Cam Smith's completely overrated. What does he do on the field? This and that, right? So obviously he's not as electric as somebody like a James Tedesco. Obviously he's not, or, or, a, or a Kalen Ponger, or, or a, he doesn't have the, 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 the power and the strength of a Greg Inglis or a Latrell Mitchell, for example, right? But it's just the little one percenters that he does. It's the it's the little smart plays that he does, right? So, have you ever seen Kim Smith do anything wrong on football field? I, I can't I can't remember. I, I cannot remember a time that he's made the wrong play. I've I've, I've never I've never seen it. Like, very I've rarely seen... will like kick it out of the full or drop nope. the ball or give a forward pass or no. Nope. And, like and, and and another thing is he, he is just he's 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 playing chess on the football field. He he is he is five steps ahead of every single player on the football field, and I don't care. And he's played with some of the greats. He he he's played like Billy Slater, Jonathan Thurston, Greg Ellis. They're, they're some of the greats, but he is still like three steps ahead of them. Like he's always thinking, and he's an absolute leader amongst men. How many like like the Melbourne Storm would be nothing without Cam Smith? No. It all start, it starts and finishes with him, and obviously this year life has been different. But but uh, that, in the last how many years? How many how many how many premierships have they won? So this is Cam Smith's pretty average career. He has so he's he's won th- he has legitimately three NRL premierships, but he had two stripped. So so he's really won five comps. Yeah, right, and. His stats are he's played 433 first grade games for the Storm. That is absolutely unheard of. And and I'll tell you what's even more impressive is the fact that he played 433 games in at hooker where he's doing a boatload of defense. So he's played 19 seasons, barely got injured. So talk about durability, 433 games. He's the NRL's all-time leading point scorer, 2,810 points. So he's a goal kicker as well. Played 42 State of Origins for Australia and uh, 42 State of Origins for Queensland and 56 tests for <laughs> Australia. Come on. <laughs> Are you serious? Can't argue with that. But, like, it's just that's my biggest gripe is, is where people say someone like a, like a James Tedesco is yeah. or a Billy Slater is better than Cam Smith. And it's purely because to the naked eye, to, to, to maybe a casual viewer, it looks like Billy Slater and a James Tedesco are, are doing more and, and they're more exciting to watch. And I'll put my hand up and I'll say, I would, I would much rather watch Billy Slater than Cam Smith. He, he's way yeah. more exciting to watch. Greg Inglis, way, 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 more, more way more line breaks, more, more yeah. than likely to, to score more tries, breakaway tries, like yeah. try saving tackles, like all, all that sort of stuff. But, it, but if you're talking a, a player who's had, a, 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 who's, I don't know a player who's had a greater influence over a team than Cam Smith. I, 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 I don't think there's any player in that I've seen that is smarter than Cam Smith. And I, I just think he's just one of the all-time great leaders in Australian sport. The Melbourne, the Melbourne Storm are one, uh, one of the greatest sporting franchises in Australia, and Cam Smith is right at the front of it. I think for a lot of people, and it, like I said, it's hard for me to say it, but they just hate the storm so much. Yeah, and, and they're, the out, they're out of <laughs> out of state, and they win all the time, and all that. So I, I understand when people don't like him, but you have to respect his game. Have yeah, a lot of a, a lot, but even even the people that dislike Cam Smith, even it, sometimes people say he's overrated because he doesn't. They feel like he doesn't doesn't do anything, but it's, it's the little things that you don't see. That make the man like he's not. He's yeah, not. He's just, not like I, there was a play last week in the Knights game when Calvin Ponga got the ball in the end goals and like stepped two guys and got it back. Oh, so that was the worst. Yeah, oh, it was oh. great. Great play. Cam Smith ain't, ain't about to do that. No, nah. and, and that's where like I remember that play a week a week on, and a lot of people would, and that's where you know that's what you want to see. It was exciting. Whereas Cam Smith is just he he probably would have gr- grabbed the ball before it went into the end goal because he would have been reading the play. In, yeah, like you know what I mean. Like he's more likely I get it. to have those plays that you don't remember. Because yeah, because because nobody's going to remember. Nobody's going to remember. I was there at Shark Park one time when the, the Sharks played in the Storm, and no one's going to remember the time where Melbourne were just struggling to get out of their end, and they were twenty five meters out, and it was the third tackle, third tackle, 
Cam Smith just scoops the ball up and just bo- just boots it downfield and kicks a 40-20 just to get him out of trouble. Like like just just the little little smart plays like that where he, t- he takes that risk and he knows that he's going to get it done. He knows the fullback's not back there. That's yeah. what separates him from everybody else for me. Yeah, Cam Smith. Yeah, second greatest player of all time, but will not argue if people say that he's the greatest. All right, it's going to annoy some people. Me saying he's better than Joey. <laughs> yep. <sighs> all right. Well, thanks again, mate. Enjoyed that one today. That was good. Yeah, got a big weekend of footy ahead, so it's getting to the the uh, end of our tipping comp too, and pretty close at the top. Me and you are actually tied. Yeah, one behind Brooke Hughes. That's going to be an exciting couple of rounds. I, and uh, I know Brooke's going to be listening to this, and I'm I'm here to tell you, Brooke, this this is the round. This is the round that I make or break. This is it. <laughs> this round. This is the one. A couple of roughies. <laughs> couple of roughies. Righto, mate. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. We'll tune in with you guys again next week. Have a great weekend. Thanks, gang.